Hey, you. Yeah, you. Do you want to look like this? Or have a bank like this? Of course you do. So today I'm going to teach you the most overlooked moneymaker on Rune Saga, Thalos, the Sentinel of Seasons. Now, all of the uniques from Thalos are worth bank, but one item in particular is the jackpot. Say hello to the Sylvan Bow. At a 1 in 600 drop rate, pulling this item will net you over 50 billion GP from a single kill, and at current prices, 50 bill is worth over $160 in scrolls. So where do we begin? How do we get there? Thalos' dock is located in the southeast corner of the home area. There are three main ways to get there. The first being to just run from the home bank all the way south and then east. The second is if there is a Triton world boss up. If there's a Triton world boss, you can go to your world boss tab and teleport to him, which will take you to the X on the right of my screen, then you run straight down. Finally, with the general scroll, you can teleport straight to the dock. You can get these in the general store at home, or from various other places. So now that you're at the dock, what do you do? Well, the first step is to fill this coffer with GP. You need a minimum of 100 million GP in order to fight Thalos. As you can see, I have 2.1 billion GP in here because I just don't die. Every death at Thalos costs 100 million gold. Notice that I said death and not attempt. As long as you don't die in the boss fight, you don't have to spend any GP at this boss. So while you're learning, all you have to do is teleport out if you think you're gonna die and you don't lose anything besides your time. Something that you veteran players may have noticed is that you don't need any items to spawn the boss. So unlike Mewtwo and Naraxxus where you need a mystic ticket or the three demi pieces, all you need here is 100 million GP and you don't even spend it as long as you don't die. So the first gear setup I'm going to show you is the bare minimum. I personally would not recommend farming Thalos in this gear, but hey, it's a free game, do whatever you like. I'm currently rocking full tier 3 soul rot with the greatsword and the crossbow as a switch for the AoE sections of the fight. You can bring a staff or use your sword for AoE if you'd like, but since we're going to be ranging P3 Thalos, you might as well just only bring the crossbow. I recommend popping your cards at the bank and bringing more anglers or your best food with you. I have super combat and ranging pots in my inventory to make sure that the kills go faster, brews and anglers for healing, super restores for prayer slash stat restore for when I brew my stats down, and then at the bottom of my inventory I have the optional section. Depending on how you plan on getting to Thalos, you can bring scrolls or mount. The mount isn't super required if you run, but I like to have it just so I don't have to worry about run energy, and obviously the mount isn't needed if you are teleporting to the boss either with your teleport scrolls or through the world boss teleport. Any of this gear can and should be upgraded to the next tier as soon as you can. Here's the gear and inventory that I currently use when I kill Thalos. You'll notice I have a lot less brews and more anglers, and I don't bring a ranged card because I actually melee the third phase of the fight, which is a much more complex strategy that I'll be showcasing at the end of this video, but is not recommended when you're learning. The main differences with this gear setup are the full Demon Hunter rather than using Soul Rot for the fight. I'm wearing the upgraded Molten Amulet. I'm wearing a Max Cape in this picture, but I usually wear a Comp Cape now. And I upgraded my Super Combat into an Imbued Heart. Now before we go into an actual fight, we're going to go over Thalos' two basic attacks. This is his range attack. This is his magic attack. You have until the projectile hits you to switch prayer. So the whole time that the projectile is in the air, you switch to Pray Mage if it's blue and pray range if it's green. The first phase of Thalos is the simplest. All he does is shoot his two regular basic attacks as well as has one special. The one special, he spawns flowers, and if they live for long enough, they disappear and Thalos heals based on how many flowers were left alive. You have two options for this phase. You can just try to DPS Thalos the whole time and maybe skip the flowers, or you can switch to your Soul Rock gear and AoE down the flowers. I personally just DPS the whole time and don't worry about the flowers, and uh, that's why this phase has a nickname called the water drinking phase on my stream, because I can do it with one hand. I just flick prayers and I drink some water. I have the plugin NPC indicators, which will highlight all of the flowers, and we actually use that a couple times in this fight so I will have all the details in the description for what to put in the NPCs to highlight box. But if you just copy these settings, you should be good. But if you can't be asked, don't worry about it. You don't need them. P2 introduces two new mechanics. Along with the regular auto attacks, P2 uses a wave and a blind attack. The key to completing this phase with the fewest mistakes possible is to 
Zoom your camera out enough so that you can see the wave and which direction it's coming from, but at the same time, still being able to see what you're being attacked with, whether that be a ranged attack, a mage attack, or a blind attack. If you dodge the wave attack, you take zero damage from it. But you'll notice here that I dodge the wave, but then I step back in too early and I still take damage from the wave. While it may look like I dodged the wave, the wave is actually invisibly three tiles long. This is to prevent you from being able to run through the wave and skip the wave entirely. The blind attack can be subtle and it can lead to a lot of damage taken, so it's important that you know what it looks like. Here's what it looks like. Thalos just kind of like throws his hand up and you have a second to turn on your prey magic and if you don't, your whole screen turns black. Here's an example of the very beginning of a P2 where Thalos starts out with a blind attack and I'm ready for it. Sometimes you don't even need to pray against the blind attack because it doesn't do any damage even if you miss it. So in this clip you see that I'm getting ready to dodge the wave, so as I reposition I see he's doing a blind attack. So I just step out of the way, dodge the wave, and click back on the boss without even worrying about praying magic. That's all there is for P2, let's get into P3. P3 introduces two new mechanics. Thalos will throw bear traps on the ground that'll trap you for a couple seconds and there's a tornado that constantly follows you and will knock you back and do large damage if it gets to you. I have the tornado marked with NBC indicators. This shows me the tile radius of the tornado and the very far southwest tile is marked. That is the tile that will hurt you when it lands on you, as well as one tile east of that one. Most players that kill Thalos use range on P3, and that's what I recommend doing when you are learning. Eventually you can try to melee it, but it takes a lot of precise movement and timing to be able to melee P3 and dodge the tornado. So when you range P3, all you have to do is attack the boss and then walk two tiles and click the boss again. And if that southwest or the tile east of that gets close to you above the tornado, all you have to do is just run a little bit and keep going. The main thing you have to focus on is switching prayers and dodging the bear traps. And use rigor. If you don't use rigor, I'm going to hunt you down. Rinse and repeat, and P3 will be over with in no time, and that takes us into P4, the final phase. P4 is the busiest phase. While all the other phases bring two mechanics to the table, P4 brings three. Two of these mechanics can be fatal, especially when they happen at the same time. The good thing is one of them is completely avoidable. During P4, if you stand still for too long, you'll be frozen in place, and we'll have to spam click away in order to break the ice. We can avoid this freeze by dancing. There are tons of different ways you can dance, so you just want to pick whichever one feels the best for you. Here are your options. The first dance that we'll show and the main one that I do is doing two hits and then stepping away. It's exactly how it sounds. You hit them twice, step away, click back on the boss. Here's what it looks like when using the Soul Rot Sword. The timing is a little tighter since the Soul Rot Sword has a slower attack speed than the Demon Hunter daggers. The second dance, and probably the easier dance to perform, is just hitting once and then stepping back. So here is me doing it with the Demon Hunter daggers, and then here it is with the Tier 5 Soul Rod Sword. It's important to note that part of what makes the movement difficult is that you still have to switch prayers in between attacks. The next special is the Avalanche. When your screen starts shaking, there's going to be a rock that flies out of the sky and lands on the ground. You have to stand south of that rock, or else you will instantly die. You can range the boss while behind the rock, but I personally don't so that I don't risk any misclicks and having to waste an entire kill. The final special of P4 is just like the healing special in P1, and that's all you need to know. The only difference is you cannot hit Thalos while the things are up, so you have to switch to AoE and break all the ice crystals that are healing him. And that's it. If you just follow this guide and do what I say in each phase, you'll kill Thalos and you'll get rich! So now that we've gone through all the phases, let's go through a full kill. So something I will mention here is I got this kill explicitly for this video. So I'm not melee carded, so the kill's gonna be a little slower than if you had max gear and were melee carded. So we start out just prayer flicking, magic and range. So this is the drink water phase, you can do it with one hand. No healers, so we didn't even have to switch gear. Something you'll notice is I always rotate my camera north, because the Thalos will always spawn north of you when you get to a new phase. Here's the wave. I stand where I can still hit him and be dodging the wave at the same time. 
flick to mage even though I didn't need to. This one's only one tile away, so we do a little dodge action. Back on the boss. This one's two away. There goes P2 into P3. We're going to be ranging it. Click boss AFK. Well, switch prayers if you need to. Now we start moving. We just try to keep a little bit of distance between us and the tornado. So it's usually shoot and move. When you get to these corners, you move a couple times. I've moved like six tiles. We're just switching prayers and making sure we're not stepping on bear traps. Sometimes it can be hard to see the projectiles if you have the tornado marked while you're ranging it. So you don't necessarily have to have the tornado marked when you range. I have it marked for melee because I let the tornado get close to me when I melee. We'll be showing a melee P3 after this full kill. There goes P3 into P4. The key is to not get frozen. And I, I do a little bit of trolling in this kill. I was zooming around. Sometimes I'll do this diagonal one. Or like the step away. So I start positioning towards the rock. Get one last hit in. Something I didn't mention, this phase kills you once the second row of like that really thick white avalanche gets to the end of the screen. So that's when the first like death wave of projectiles goes through the whole screen. Once that second wave hits the back wall is when you would die. And no healing phase for what? Why is there Run up the boss, click here, here, here. Then we're just walking him three tiles, then clicking on him. Once we're here, we pray mage. We're gonna click right here and then here to start walking him the other way. Three, pray range. I didn't do the best job explaining this during the kill, so I'm gonna try to after now. Uh, the main concept is you step under his southwest tile, the very far left, and you make him move. So when you step under his southwest tile, he'll always move east. So you step under southwest tile, hit, and then you walk three tiles east, and you keep pushing him to the east until he hits the wall. And then you just do the little U-turn that I showed, and just do it back the other way west. Thank you for watching my Thalos guide. If you made it this far into the video, uh, make sure you put your in-game name in the comments so that you can be entered into our double heist key giveaway. Thanks.